Welcome to Be Diabetes. I'm Dennis Pollock. Today we're going to talk about the name of the game in reversing diabetes, or at least one of the big names of the game. I'm going to be looking at a few things uh, written by Dr. Robert Lustig. The book is called Fat Chance. Obviously, it has something to do with fat. And we're going to talk about fat when it comes to the name of the game of reversing and beating diabetes. Uh, fat is involved. Now, it's not quite what you think. I mean, you may be saying, all right, that means if you're slim, you'll never get diabetes. If you're medium, you probably won't have a problem with diabetes. If you're fat, you'll always have diabetes. It's not that simple. It's a little more complicated, but fat is a big issue. And, you know, if you went to the average diabetic and said, uh, and he's having all kinds of health problems, he's, he's got uh, all kinds of uh, various diabetic complications, and he's ha got neuropathy, and his eyes are going bad, and you say, what's your problem? He'd probably say, well, my problem, duh, it's diabetes. Seems like once I got diagnosed with diabetes, things just started going south. If you go to someone who's a little more knowledgeable, they may not just say diabetes. They'll say, well, I'm diabetic because I'm insulin resistant. Well, so far, so good. That is true. Type 2 diabetes, that is, is generally because of insulin resistance. Or they might call it metabolic syndrome. But still, what if you say, yeah, but why are you insulin resistant? Why are you insulin resistant and Billy Bob, your neighbor, is not insulin resistant? And uh, that's where it may get a little more complicated. Some people may just say, well, I just happened to be born with an insulin resistance gene in me, and it finally exploded once I turned 52. Why are some people insulin resistant and others are not? Well, according to Dr. Lustig, it has to do with fat. So let's get a few of his quotes real quick. I don't want to make this too long, but he says, do you ever wish all the fat in your body would somehow disappear. And a lot of people might say, yeah, absolutely. I wish I could just press a button. Boom. Every trace of fat from my body would leave. And he goes on to make the point that would be the worst thing that could happen to you. He actually says there is a disease called lipodystrophy. He says it's one of the worst diseases known to humankind. And basically what he declares is that when you've got this lipodystrophy and First, I had heard of it, was reading here, but he says, you don't gain fat much at all anywhere on your body. So if you eat too many calories, whether they're vegan calories or keto calories or carnivore calories or paleo calories, you're just eating more calories than you're expending. It's going to go into your organs. Your body just has a resistance to build up fat anywhere else but it'll take them in the organs. And so with that, you end up becoming diabetic. You get heart attacks like crazy strokes and so forth. So he's like, don't wish you had no fat at all. And uh, he's, he makes the point that fat's okay. In fact, we were created to store fat in our body. That's not abnormal. That's not freakish. That's not unhealthy or unnatural. But he says, the problem is in your middle. Let, re let me repeat that. The problem is in your middle. He's talking about the stomach region and the organs that are behind the stomach. That's where the problem lies. And uh, I, had, I was uh, with the, the publisher of my, several of my books and my latest book that's going to hopefully come out next year sometime. And uh, we were talking about diabetes, obviously, because the book is a book about diabetes. And he asked, well, what is it that really makes people tend to be diabetic? Is it their blood type? I said, no, it's not their blood type. It's their body type. <laughs> and I, I said, you know, some people can gain 20, 30 pounds beyond what's considered normal for their weight and still look really good because they gain weight all over. They gain it in their arms, their legs, their, their buttocks, their calves, and their stomach. So it's distributed well. And they may be 25 pounds overweight, and you look at them and you think, boy, they look good. He said, well, yeah, that's, that's me, actually. He says, I gain weight pretty much all over my body. But that's not me. And I've been the type that if I gain weight, it's in my stomach. And that is the worst body type ever. 
So, and the, and the worst place for the fat of all is the liver. Uh, and, and, and that's what a lot of people have, didn't used to much. But now there's a lot of people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And uh, it is not a good thing. He says, it's the visceral fat that doctors care about because it's the visceral fat that kills you. Visceral fat is a fancy word that means it builds up in your inner organs. So whether you look big on the outside or not, if it's building up on your liver and pancreas particularly, those are the two worst organs you can have a lot of fat, the liver and the pancreas. He says, if it's building up there, visceral fat, you're in trouble. So that's what the doctors look for. And he makes the statement that when you tend to lose weight, this visceral fat around your middle and in your organs is the first fat to go. Now, that's where I have to uh, maybe disagree with the good doctor a little bit and take some exception, because that's not true for me. If I lose weight, my face will get thin. You know, there was a time when I went keto and I lost weight like almost everybody does when they first do keto. It, it, it didn't stay, but I did for a while. Now, I'm 5 feet 10 inches tall, at least the last time I checked. As you get older, you may lose an inch or two, but 5 feet 10, and I quickly dropped down after a keto diet within a short time to the point where I was around 153, 154, 155, mid 150s, let's say, low to mid 150s. And I looked terrible. I looked rail thin. Now, five feet 10 and 155 pounds is really not a bad height and weight combination. And there are a lot of people that can be 5'10 and 155 and look great. But boy, I sure didn't. I looked, <laughs> I looked terrible. Looked like I'd been on a starvation diet. And uh, I realized I, I was single at the time looking for and praying for a wife. And I thought, no woman's going to want a skinny guy like me. And I, I forced myself to eat more food than I really wanted to just to, to pick up the weight. And I did. I these days, I have to work at it to stay under 170. But I don't look good at 155 because that weight, I'll still have a pretty good sized stomach, but nothing else. Skinny arms, skinny legs, skinny face. So if I go on a diet and, and significantly lose some weight, my face will look bad. I will look gaunt is a good word for it. And uh, that's the tricky part. He makes the statement, it appears that as many as 50% of women and 20% of men who are categorized as normal on the basis of their BMI are actually obese on the basis of their visceral fat, their organ fat, their middle fat. All kinds of health issues will develop because of that visceral fat. Say it with me, visceral fat, middle fat, organ fat. The kind of fat that attaches to your organs as your belly swells, or in some cases, not always, but in some cases, even your belly doesn't look that big. But when they take a look at your liver through however means they do, they're like, your, your liver's full of fat. That's, that's an odd thing. And there's one researcher that coined the term TOFI, T-O-F-I, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So, I mean, that's really at the heart of a, a lot, probably most insulin resistance, which turns into di full-scale diabetes. Starts out as just insulin resistant a bit, then more, then more, then you're diabetic. And all the complications, they may even occur before you get diagnosed as diabetic. Now, here's the issue. There are some things in life we can change. There's a lot you cannot change. You cannot change your personality. Sometimes I've wished I could. I wish I had a better personality. I've always been kind of an introvert and more thoughtful and analytical and not really the, the social gadfly kind of a person. And sometimes I admire people that are good in social situations and I'm just really not. I'm pretty good talking to people one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, but 
When I get into a big social situation, I don't do so well. I can't change that. I mean, I can try. I can try to say some things and, and do my best, but I will never be that social life of the party personality. You, I can't change that. Nor can I change my body type, my tendency toward being heavy in the middle. What that means is I have to deliberately make a choice that I'll be a little thinner than I really would uh, like to be. The truth is I, I would like to be a little heavier if it was all good, solid muscle and had that good athletic look, although at my age it hardly matters anymore. But uh, I, for years, have had to work at being on the thinner side because I know it's directly tied to my insulin resistance and my blood sugar. Now, I'm doing pretty good. And even though my belly is never probably going to be lean and uh, with all the abs and all that, I'm able by a low carbohydrate diet, by avoiding all the junk and the garbage and the chips and the donuts and the sweets and the starches, I'm able to keep a really good A1C, I, I think it's pretty good for a guy my age, 4.9 or so, uh, I'm able to do that. And that's what I'm determined. And I'm also determined that I'm not going to eat as much. I take smaller portions than I would really like. So no, I can't change my body type. I can't go to my creator and ask for a different one. I've got what I've got. <laughs> that's just it. But I can react to that body type by making wise decisions and not eating so much. And what I do eat, it's low carbohydrate. And the low carbohydrate works with the not eating so much because you tend not to store so much fat. So when it comes to beating diabetes, one of your big jobs is keep an eye on the middle fat, the mid fat, the visceral fat, the, the belly area. Don't let it get out of hand. And of course, keep an eye on your A1C. Keep an eye on your carbohydrates in your diet. Keep them on the low side for sure. And uh, chances are you can live a good, long, healthy life. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.